Hey everyone and welcome back. We've got another engine teardown as part of this engine teardown marathon. We've got Mike with us again. Hello. And uh, this one uh, belongs to Bill. Came out of a 2005 Dyna and we're doing a actually a full skunk series build on this one. 124, all this and really kind of a whole bike build. A performance Dyna sort of thing if you will. So the engine's got about 15,000 miles on it. Uh, we don't know of any known issues. We also don't really know of any modifications that could potentially have been done to it, uh, simply because the bike was bought used to do this specific project. I did crank, ride, run the bike, and all this sort of stuff, and I don't see any issues with it at all. I'm actually quite excited to tear this one down because what I'm hoping we're going to see on the inside is what I would deem as normal wear, okay? So, I get related in typical fashion. We'll start at the bottom, work our way down. And I'll show you each of you guys ex examples of what would be, what I would say, normal and acceptable wear for an engine around 15, 20,000 miles, give or take. Uh, it sounded quiet. There were no noises at all. It actually ran really good. So, I think this is a good learning experience for everyone, too, right? So, because not every engine we build has a problem when we tear it down. So, uh, uh, again, 2005 Dyna, it's 88 cubic inch, best I know, best we know. And uh, we'll dive in. Now, one thing I can I can tell right off the bat, just we you know we talk about little clues here and there. Uh, I don't see a, I don't see a tremendous amount. I mean, there's some oil in the th in the throttle body here, but all engines missed a little bit of oil. It's no big deal. Uh, but it's not excessive from what I can see in here. And uh, some other clues, we've got stock pushrod tubes on it. Most of the time when people put cams in or to cam plate or whatever, uh, they'll put uh, easy install tubes in that have a longer clip. So we just got regular uh, tubes in there. If I look at the head gaskets, uh, they are stock style composite gaskets. Now, could you technically put a cam in and use these tubes? Yes, but it can be a pain in the butt to adjust push rods. Uh, build could also have been done using the stock push rods. Uh, it could be a 95 and they just use stock composite gaskets like what you see with a lot of the Harley kits. So again, we don't know for certain, but uh, that's a good indication that uh, we're dealing with a, with a stock one. See what they look like too. That was front cylinder, front rear. Well, it does have those Screaming Eagle split fire sort of plugs in it. Um, doesn't necessarily look oil fouled, but it does. Even though this engine's been sitting for quite a while, um, you can still smell the fuel. So she was running quite a bit rich uh, through the entire range. Um, you can see there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's running pretty rich. Well, let's take a look and see what we got here. Ooh, got a pretty putrid smell to it. But, but if you notice, it doesn't smell burnt. It just smells like age, yeah. right? So 2005, sitting for that long, it's just, you know, you get a lot of condensation inside these things. So it just, it just gets putrid. How long was it sitting again? Oh, it's been sitting for years. All right. Yeah, it's been sitting for years. Uh, we can see on the rockers first here, just a little bit of wear here on the tip. Okay. Which, that's perfectly normal. I can't feel anything with my fingernails, so we don't have any problems with the rockers. Um, there's very little axial play here in the rockers on the support, but when we go back to do the build, then I would torque these down, measure the axial play with them torqued down, just to be certain. So that's a good, always a good thing to do. Let's crack the breathers. Um, not a tremendous amount of oil here, yes. Again, like I said, all engines missed oil, but it's not caked in here. Uh, this is very brittle and just, yeah, yes, it kind of disintegrates. So those uh, filters do age. And Okay. 
What I want to do is just fill the umbrella valve and see if it's real brittle. And it's not. See, it's still, still flexible. Which it's going to get replaced anyway, but uh, th those feel good. The shafts are actually still tight uh, in the support, which is fantastic. They're not going to be doing all of that. So they're not just falling out. So what that's telling us is they're not just falling out. The shafts weren't spinning inside the rocker support. So that's a great thing. Yeah, but like 15,000, 20,000 miles, should you have seen anything? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Um, it's just, it's great to, you know, great to see this. Uh, we'll look at the push rods. A nice even wear ring down here on the tappet side. A nice even wear here on the top. It actually feels smooth. Uh, one of the things, if you feel in this area here, uh, if it feels sharp or mushroomed, that can be an indication of uh, a weak or a dead lifter, or also an excessive lifter to bore clearance. But uh, if you feel that, it feels pretty good. Same on that one. Okay, the engine has been into before, it appears, uh, only because these are not stock gaskets. Uh, actually, let me back up on that. It's got an HD part number on it, 16719-99. Okay, yeah, so they're black, interesting. Stinks. It does. It's got it's got a an aged. Uh, you can tell it's been sitting. I mean, it's just uh, the, all the moisture in there. It's all just went rancid. <clears throat> Same here again. Normal wear. Nice and tight. Shafts aren't moving. It's a great sign. So we're in good shape Did you there. Breather at all? Or? I'm sure it's going to look the same. Just from what I'm seeing. Push rods feel good. And you can tell the deeper we're getting, you 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 know you smell that, right? Like I said, it's sticking me out pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the other thing I'm looking at is the tip of the valve stem while I'm in here. Uh, I don't see any uneven wear there. Uh, no sign of any concern. A little tough one. I work my garage. Times like that, it's like, did I do something wrong? <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Stock ports, nothing's been done. So, yeah, that part looks good. What do they normally torque to? Are they just around 40, around 45 foot pounds? Yeah. 
Still not as tight as the ones on an M8. <laughs> Not bad at all. And see, some carbon buildup is to be expected, you know, but uh, it's not a tremendous amount. There's not a lot of big, big flakes in there. You also notice you don't have a bright white exhaust valve. There's, you know, good coloration on the intake valve. Um, looks, it looks healthy to me. All right. You can see there's a little bit of moisture to it, to the carbon. Um, yeah, we saw it was running a little bit rich. The cross hatch looks fantastic in the cylinder. So if you guys maybe can see in there. Yeah, nice cross hatch. There's no, no markings or area of concern at all. So that's a normal cylinder. You can see how it's kind of wiped, a little bit of it wiping off. Now, remember this engine sat for a long time, right? So, you know, the moisture, the condensation, and then you run it. So, in other words, it's almost like it, you know, may have developed a little bit of surface rust on the inside of the cylinder. Right. But it, it would have been perfectly fine to run this engine with that little bit of discoloration. And if we look at the edge of the pistons, we don't see a tremendous amount of carbon here in this area, which is great. Um... A little bit on the sides, not too much. The rings, edges are nice and sharp. Feel that? All right, so they weren't rolling. The skirts look great. Wasn't a lot of rock going on or anything like that. So let's go ahead and let's see. Front and rear looks good. A, a thin coat of carbon on the top, but nothing, again, no cause for concern. That's what I would deem completely normal. That's going to be a little, a little more stubborn. It's the holidays, it's allowed. <laughs> It's fat from his Thanksgiving dinner. And you can see this is, you know, one of the pre-07 flywheels, of course, uh, because, uh, you know, we've got square top rods. We also have uh, wrist pin bushings in the rods there. And our wrist pin fit was nice. There's no discoloration, scratches, or scarring there. Uh, you grab the... Uh you left it in the toilet. Did I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going. Since I'm going to be boring the cases on it, I'm not really concerned about the rods here either. So we're going to let that roll. Oh, I thought I might get lucky. Oh, I almost trapped my finger. You got extras. We're going to have to tap them. Man, perfect wear. Rollers look great. No scarring of any kind on the tappet body itself. Same with this one. Rollers look great. <coughs> Same here. Isn't it nice and shiny? Rollers themselves are nice. All right. Those look good. 
These are the front, right? Uh, we're not reusing them anyway. I just, you know, when I do these teardowns, I like I like to do this because it can give me an indication. Just one, it's part of its experience, right? Just be, to be able to look and find normal wear patterns. So that's why I tear each one down very methodically because I want to take, you know, the known issues, the noises that may have been heard or anything like that and look for wear patterns. And tore down this many and built this many, you start to see those patterns over time, right? Yep. And then helps you solve those problems. But uh, this one, the bores, the bores look fantastic. Nothing major there. Now look down in there. This one, there are no signs of any kind of sumping at all on this engine, right? Right. And uh, you see any oil in the crankcase? A little bit. All right. Now take and rotate the flywheel over. All right. Notice it. It is coating it. It barely touching it though. Mm -hmm. Just barely, barely touching it. Um, so it's really not a sumping issue. What we're going to see more than likely is maybe about, I don't know, we might see about maybe four, four ounces come out of here, right. which is to be expected. It's, it's, that's what I would deem normal. What I want to do, since this one is black, mm -hmm. I'm going to put that over it, and then we're only going to use this very soft hammer. There we go. There's two different densities on that, if you heard it, yep. right? I want to use the soft one first, if that doesn't do it. But you see, we don't damage the powder coat when we do that. Yep. And see, like I said, getting just a little bit out, that may be three to four ounces at the most. That's, that's what would be normal. All right. Don't see anything in there. And I'm interested to see what the chain tensioner looks like because, you know, we... Typically, we recommend people with these twin cams to chain, you know, at least inspect those tensioners at roughly 15 to 20,000 miles. So this one's got a little over 15,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a good indication of uh, of what they look like at 15,000 miles. Okay, that one's off. Now I'm going to show you guys a little trick. So we talk about inspecting them. You actually don't have to completely remove your cam plate to inspect the inner. Or so inspecting the outer can be as simple as what I just did pulling that back and taking a look at it of course we're going to remove it and let you guys see it but i can tell you now that we're well over well over halfway worn all right now the way that you can check the inner one you have to have a flashlight to do it and you want to be careful with this there's a hook it's hard i know you can't see it on camera guys sorry but when you look down in there at the tensioner there's a small hook and what that hook is made for is so that when you pull this one back, you can slide you know, this in place to take the tension off of it on the opposite side. That little hook is a great spot for you to take a very wide flat blade screwdriver. And you slide it right in here on the cam plate and just grab the end of that hook. And if you have a flashlight, you can pry up on that and be able to look down in there and see the edge of the tensioner and uh, and you could see just that front edge, but that will tell you how much it's worn. And this one is in much better shape than the outer. If you guys have done enough of these, you would know that most of the time the outer one was the big problem, not really the inner. So, uh, you know, looking down in there, I can tell you that it's, it's uh, maybe a third of the way through. You don't want to let it snap back down. You want to let it go back down there easily. And it's as simple as that right there. Give it a peek. Slide that back in there. All right, that's how you can inspect the inner without taking off the cam plate.
Nothing unusual. Okay. What's that for? Uh, we want to keep that lower bolt. No, keep it with, yeah, that. The other one we're going to take a look at, of course, you want to inspect the shoe that mounts on this side here. And you can see there's very, very little wear on that. Uh, you can feel a bit of a ridge there, but uh, that's not bad at all. Now we'll remove our tensioner and I'll give you guys a closer, closer look of that. All right, let's have a look. Now remember, this is after about 15,000 miles. It's got a lot of wear on this top edge and it's uh, halfway, right? Well over. So what starts happening, you start getting really close. You'll notice there's more wear on the top edge than the bottom necessarily. And so you start getting pretty close to these cutouts here on the inside. And this, of course, with age, we have to keep that in mind as well. They become brittle. And we can also see little slivers that have been pulled out of it here. And uh, this is definitely one that, that I would want to replace. So that's what would be expected at 15,000, give or take. And that's why we recommend at roughly 20, 25,000 miles, you probably need them. So uh, that's normal. Uh, if you pull the threads out somewhere, or somebody does, can you heal a coil them, or is there some way of repairing them? I, I, yes, I, I'm not a fan of Healy coil. I would use a, uh, I like time search better. Just in how they, they install, it's a little more of a, I would say almost a reusable type of repair. Right. Mm -hmm. They are a little trickier to install, but If we can pull the oil pump with the cam plate. All right, cam plate screws. Now, the other thing I'm going to take a look at here is around here on the cam plate. You know, this again, this is a uh, pre 2000, pre 2007. So uh, we have a bushing in here on the, on the plate, and there's no mushrooming or anything like that that I can feel. So, no, I would say at this point, there's no signs of really any run out issues either. And then we can see on the cams what I would say again normal looks like. All right? You you've got a little bit of this frosting. I almost hate using that word, but you have a little bit of, of it on the cam, but if you look at all the lobes, all of them, uh, they look identical to each other. Um, so there's really no, you know, cause for concern. You see a little bit of discoloration, but again, I would call that completely normal. We'll point out that hook that we were using earlier. What's that? We'll point out that hook you were using earlier. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. That's a good, thanks, Mike. So when I mentioned how you can check these without taking it out, right, you see the little hook right there. So when you come in with the screwdriver, that's what you're hooking on that small hook right there to raise it up and have a look at it and uh, we're gonna take take this one off as well and actually it's easier when you're pulling the plate I didn't do it because I want you guys to see it uh, before you pull the plate to actually use the screwdriver to lift it up and slide your pin in it like that or you can use an uh, you know an allen key if you want to do it that way to go ahead and slide your pin in it that way you've got rigid control of it but since I've got Mike here uh, I'm going to have Mike hold the cam plate and uh, I'm going to see if I can a little easier to do it probably like this and then what I'm going to do is pry on that and try to get the, sure. the pin through there. Now what you do is these four screws come out since these are pressed into place, which in 07, that changed. So 07, they just slid in, uh, but these, they have to be pressed out. So we're gonna remove these four screws to remove that. 
One thing I wanted to show you guys is what I would deem, I guess I would say normal for an oil pump as well. So you can see these ridges, wear marks, right? I can barely fill them with my fingernail, just barely. But if I rotate that G-Rotor around in there, there's not a lot of excessive play on it. It's mating up really nice. And that's what I would say would be normal. See the little rings? And that's not a big deal. I, again, I can just barely, barely catch a fingernail on it. Not at all unusual. Uh, and if we go inside, a little bit of wear here on this one on the outside you just see just wear marks again this is not a problem and i can barely feel the ridge with my fingernail just ever so slightly but we can see the mating surfaces in the pump body here and you just see slight wear marks a little bit of graying if you will but it's even all the way around uh, there is a little more wear in this one spot right here, and you can feel a little bit more of a groove. But, uh, again, that's not unusual and really not a major cause for concern. That pump could last a very long time in that state. And then we're going to compare the mating surface to the cam plate. Again, we have even wear patterns throughout the entire thing, both G-rotors inside the pump and also here on the back of the cam plate. Again, you can just... I mean, barely feel it uh, with a fingernail, but there's no mushrooming here. If we look at the bushing on the inside of the plate, even wear all the way around, I'm going to guess we are going to check run out here in a second. Uh, I'm going to say that we probably have no more than a couple thousandths run out on this crank, two, maybe three at the absolute most. So uh, let's go over to the press. All right, we're back from the press, remove the cams. It does have 203 cams in it. So cams were swapped, stock push rods reused, and that explains why the gaskets were black, right. not stock gaskets. Um, there's a little closer, I'll give you a little closer look at the cams here. Again, normal, you can see a little bit of a track mark from the roller there, but you can't, you know, you can't catch your finger on it. No major issues there. Now, for the inner tensioner. All right, see that one there? It was time to replace this one too. Uh, it's about a little less than halfway through, but certainly time to replace this one. Um, so in this case, yes, I would have, I would replace them both. So this, as you can see, Mike, is normally flush. Right. Like you guys can see here, give you a better idea of the amount of wear. Normally flush, but what you have on this side, you can see there. So we're, uh, yeah, close to half worn on that one as well. So that inner one is worn a little bit more than I would typically see at 15,000 miles, but uh, for whatever reason. Other than that, plate. And then uh, let's do a quick run out check. Again, I'm going to say just looking at the clues I've seen along the way uh, with wear on the pump, um, no, no obvious signs of something. It may have been running a little bit rich. Um, if we look at the pinion, the noise you're hearing when I rotate it around, matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and pull it away so we don't have to, we don't have to sit here and listen to it. Rods feel fine. Okay, if you remember the last one that we tore down, I, I mentioned how rod should have a little bit of shake on the rear mm -hmm. and about twice as much on the front. Right. right. So we grab it right here. It's that very little bit of shake that you have there. Right. And I'll let you feel that. That just a little. All right. This one's going to be about twice as much. See the difference? Yep. So it's just a real quick and easy way to look at it. If they're real tight, then that's a sign that something's going on, scissoring or something. Uh, 
but there are no tight spots in it whatsoever. Um, now, do you ever see them too loose? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's wear. Bearing wear, everything else. But these feel great. So let's just do a quick, quick run out. Right now, earlier you said one to two thousands, right? I'm predicting somewhere around, somewhere around two, maybe three. All right. All right, because when I'm looking at the wear patterns of what I would see in the plate, the bushing, the pump, yep. I, when you start getting into the four to five range, is when I start seeing other issues. Yep. So, uh, we're at zero right there. Let me adjust. That's right at one, two, three. Is that what you saw? Yep. And of course, I'm, I mean, I could check it. I'm getting a little bit of a movement because I'm not rigidly attached, yep. you know, with it rocking around, but I can put it on the base because this is a bolted to the base. And then let's see if we get a little bit more of an accurate measurement here. There we go. Okay, now come around and look at it. See what you see. They're not going to be able to see it on the camera, but... So we're at... Uh, remember, this is a half thousandths gauge. All right. So right there, we're at a half. We roll it around. We're at three and a half. All right. So... There we go. So three thou. Yeah. So it's, you know, that three foul, that's, you know, one of the indicating things, kind of like, you know, when we talk about putting gear drive on and all this type of stuff, because you can't really maintain half to one thou backlash when you have a run out of more than three, right. right? Because it's moving side to side. But when you start seeing the big wear problems on the pump, you gear, the pump, gear rotor, the pinion and those sort of things, that's when it starts stretching above three thousandths. When you start getting to four, five, six, Five, you start seeing the mushrooming. Six, you start seeing really uneven wear on the pinion shaft and the G-rotors inside the pump. Uh, and then it just, you know, gets yeah. progressively worse from there. But, uh, and if you look at the wear there on the pinion shaft, notice it's it's a little lighter right there mm -hmm. where, the, where your oiling hole is. Yep. And it's a little more on the sides there. All right, and that's what you would expect to see. So like in that area, you see a little bit more wear, but notice you cannot feel it with your fingernail. Nope. Right? And then if we go back around, see it's a little lighter right there, but you still can't feel it. Nope. So that little bit of uneven wear that we saw on the gear rotors, is that little bit, mm -hmm. little bit on the back of the plate, and that is normal for two to three thousandths because a stock, stock crank having less than three is pretty rare. So we're we're right at three on this one, and that's not an issue at all. And what I would say would be normal. That pretty much sums it up. I hope you found this one informative, right? Not every engine that we tear down has some major mechanical issue. If anything, you get to see what normal wear and tear looks like, right? So what have we got left over there, Mike? We've got uh, one, two, two twin cams. We've got an M8. And uh, let's see, we got a couple others over there. Yep, a couple others stacked over there. And then uh, actually the next two twin cams we're gonna be tearing down, uh, they're both soft tails. So I don't think I've done a video showing a full tear down on a twin cam soft tail. So we get to see that. And we're gonna be filming these throughout the week among other things. What do you think, Mike? I'll learn every day. Learn every day, found yeah. it. Guys, thanks a million for watching. We'll see you here in a few days for another teardown video. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one. You want to close it? Yep. Have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.